Hi, this is a quick overview of the free video conference tool Zoom. After reading over the over 20,000 teachers that have been sharing on Facebook their experiences of being in a closure, largely in Asia over the last three months, um, I have been advocating for Meet for quite a while, and they've convinced me that Zoom is a far better tool for classroom management. And let's go through what Zoom does, and I think you'll see why. So you log into Zoom using your Google account, just as you would Google. Let's click over to Schedule Meeting, and under Schedule Meeting, I think you'll see right away some differences. So here I have my topic, period two, seventh grade history. I've set it during the time that class usually meets. Um, here's one different Zoom is only 40 minutes. Google is unlimited um, in duration, but 40 minutes I think is sufficient for most classes, but there's a 40 minute cap for Zoom free accounts. I set this to reoccurring for every single day uh, at this time, though I could set it to be on certain days um, if my class only meets certain days. And I'm having this repeat until the end of April. Now I can also set here, so I've down here, some other interesting options. I can require that everyone sit, um, that people can join before me. However, when they join, that they're automatically muted until I am, um, until I decide to unmute everybody. And I can decide to do a waiting room so that while they can join, they're not there before I come in, kind of like them waiting outside the classroom before I come. A one-time adjustment to make before we launch our first session is to go to settings on the left and then scroll all the way down to in meeting advance and to turn out breakout rooms. What this allows you to do is during your virtual meeting to set up rooms where kids can have small group discussion and work on team projects. And let's take a look at what this looks like in Zoom. So once I've saved my settings and create my session, uh, just like Google Classroom, uh, just like Google Meets, there is a URL um, that you send out to the kids. Difference from Google Meets is that you this URL you don't have to have a login to access the meeting. They can just go to that. That's useful for younger kids. So I'm going to start this meeting. If you're using a MacBook, this will ask you to install a small app, which is shown down here, Zoom US. Join a computer. So here we are in a live Zoom conference, and let's go through this from a teacher's perspective. First. In the upper center, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the drop arrow. This will bring up Pin and Spotlight. Pin allows you to pin what you see on your screen. Spotlight allows you to pin on all screens in your room what they see, so everyone sees the same thing. This way, the auto, um, the the auto feature of of it trying to decide who should be on the screen is overridden by your pinning. So then let's go to the bottom left to see what functions. So mute, you can mute yourself video here if i go over to the drop arrow here i can choose my doc cam and show my doc cam in my conference now a little trick here when you show your doc cam your letters may at first be inversed so under video settings you want to want to see if mirror my video or not mirror my video is what will make your text look the way you want it okay let me go back to my facetime you can invite users largely by copying the URL, which will send them to this conference. Um, remember, they don't need to have a login to access it, though it's nice for them to use the login. Managing participants. This is the, I can mute everybody so that everyone's listening to me. I can unmute everybody, okay? I can, let's take a look at some other options here. I'm muting all participants as they enter so they don't come in noisy as a teacher, we know what that's like. Let's go over the chat. If we go over the chat function here, I can go over the more button and I can say that everyone is able to chat with the host, everybody, or no one. So if the chat's becoming a distracting feature, I can turn off chat so they can focus here. Um, center button, share. This is so I can share a screen. So interesting here is um, among the options here is I can share my phone screen. If I have slides on my phone, I can share a whiteboard. If I want to draw, especially useful if I have a stylus on an iPad, um, I can share and I'll just share my regular screen here. When I share my desktop, I could be sharing slides or documents or websites. And when the students view it on a phone or iPad, they can actually annotate. If you see on the bottom right, that's what it looks like for a student. They can write on the screen. So it'd be writing math problems or annotating and screenshotting that to turn in. And finally, I can record. So I can record a key part of this meeting so that I can later download that and upload it to the site for those who missed it.